No, you are not seeing things here. I am actually going to get on with another video. Oh, what's that doing there? That's not part of it. There's one bright light. I hope you can hear me over the fan. I've had to shut my windows because the neighbours are out. And I am so paranoid because every time they're out there, or at least a certain neighbour is out there, I think it's going to start up his chainsaw and make a lot of noise. So it's better safe than sorry. Have the windows shut, bear the unbearable temperatures that this room gets to with the windows shut and hope I don't melt. Or burst into flames, whichever comes first. Of course they're immigrants, they would be. Wouldn't be so bad if we got immigrants from the nice countries like, uh, France, or Germany, or Italy, or Spain, or Holland, or the Netherlands, but no. We get the ones from the asshole countries. I just wish I could move out into the country, you know? Nice house with about a hundred acres of land all around it. So I can open my window and not be bombarded by noise. Yeah, that sounds like absolute heaven for me. But I've got to live in suburbia. People were not supposed to live this close together. I'm already paranoid with noise anxiety. I remember it used to be like I would open the window and all I would hear would be the birds chirping and the wind blowing through the trees. Now whenever I open the window I'm greeted by the noise of drunken hooligans yelling, machines going, kids yelling, parties, you name it. It's no wonder I'm so cranky all the time. But yeah, now that rant's over. So, yeah, if you remember the circuits, we got to sort of this part here, and this is pretty much where I left off. I'm trying to work out what capacitor I should use here. So, that's what I'm going to do today. Okay, so, I've got two secondaries that I made here. I made these quite a long while ago. This one is 500 turns, and this one is 1,000 turns. I also spent the better part of yesterday making this primary. So this is about seven turns. I've just used the um, garden light as the thing to wind the wire around. And for the wire itself, I've just used ordinary coax wire. You can see how this is assembled. I am a little bit concerned with these two loops of wire here. Hope they don't get too close to the secondary and arc to it. Okay, so what the capacitor is going to do is it's going to give the primary the same resonant frequency as the secondary. So we need to find out the inductance of the primary, the resonant frequency of the secondary, so we can work out what this needs to be. I'm going to do this with several of my secondaries, so I know which capacitor to use with whatever secondary. So yeah, I need to make a little circuit where I can find out what the resonant frequency of the secondaries is. So this is the circuit that I've come up with. It's basically a Slayer exciter. Instead of a bipolar transistor, I'm using a MOSFET. And to um, feed the MOSFET, I'm using a gate driver I see. And it gets its feedback from the secondary here, going straight into the gate driver I see. These two diodes protect it from over-voltage from the secondary. That's basically the circuit. Got all the parts right here. Let's put this together. And here it is. I know there's a lot of board going to waste, but you know, cramming everything into the smallest space, I've got more of this to use for other things. So this is what it looks on like on this side. This is what it looks like on this side. So the red wire and the black wire, that's where the power goes to the chip. These two wires go off to the MOSFETs, um, drain and source. And this white wire is there for the feedback from the secondary. So, let's wire this up and see if it works. Okay, so I'm having to use my other camera here to get this whole elaborate setup all in the shot. So, from left to right, let's have a look at what we've actually got here. So, on the most left is the scope, which is going to measure the output from the secondary. And how I'm doing that is I've got a probe just taped to the wall here, a little bit of wire on it, which is going to act as an antenna, so it can pick up the output from the secondary. Next, got the control circuitry, and the MOSFET mounted on this big heatsink. 
It's far too big for this job, but um, it'll do it. And that's going to be powered off a 9 volt battery. And to provide the juice for the primary, I've got this transformer connected to a rectifier, and that's going into the primary and the MOSFETs. I'm also using a light bulb to limit the current in case anything goes wrong. I also hope my neighbours don't troll me while I have the window open, but yeah. So ominous. The shed's open, they could start any second. Okay, so we're ready for a power-up. The transformer is connected and nothing's blown up so far, so that's good. Now I'm going to connect the battery and let's see if we get anything on scope would also help if the camera was pointed at it. Also, like my um, top load... Yeah. Connecting the battery and... Oh yeah! Look at that, we have output! Current limiting bulb has come on a little bit, but... That is looking really good. Now I'm going to put my hand near it. See how it affects the frequency. As I'm doing an... I'm not going to touch it because I will get a shock off it. Let's have a look at our frequency, which is about 1.2 megahertz. Okay then, so... We know the resonant frequency of this particular coil is 1.2 megahertz. So, it looks like the primary was connected the right way around. But I've just gone and reversed those connections to see what we get now. And connect up the battery. Just for the hell of it. Yeah, we have a little bit of wiggle wiggle there, but... Okay, well, this is the other secondary. Same type of top load. Now, I haven't reversed the primary connections. We'll see if we need to. But let's see what we get this with this one. Okay, not getting much of anything, so yeah, I'm just going to reverse those connections. And I'll be right back. Okay, this secondary just does not seem to be working. Even though I have put the primary connections the right way round, still don't get a very good wave on the scope. Just connect up the battery and we can see if that will stay on there. Getting a very good wave at all. So yeah, I something's wrong with this secondary. Maybe we've got a couple of I mean maybe I've got a couple of cross turns or something. Well we do have continuity, we've got about 133 ohms. So I'm going to say that this has got a couple of cross turns or something. Okay, so the next thing I want to do we're back with the 500 turn secondary is see what the resonant frequency would be if it was sparking because when it's sparking the length of the spark you get affects the resonant frequency it's a bit like an additional top load so to stand in for a spark I'm just using a piece of wire it's a bit optimistic we won't actually see any sparks in this video but so, let's say I was expecting a spark of this length. That's what this piece of wire is for. It's just being held up by a bit of cotton thread and connected to the top of the coke can there. So I'm going to turn this on and let's see what frequency we get. So, let's have a look. Connect up my battery. Transformer's already connected. On there, then we have about 1.26 megahertz. So now we know. And just out of curiosity, let's try this without the piece of wire. So connect me battery up again. Let's see what the frequency is now. And as you can see, it's gone up just a little tiny bit. 
Okay, so we're back on the other camera and ready to measure the inductance of the primary. Now, I'm going to do this with the secondary still connected and grounded because I think that's just a much better way of doing it because this is going to have some effect on the inductance of the primary. So, I always think that's better to take that into account. So, turn on my LC meter here and have a look at the inductance and let's just make sure that's nice and well connected. That's about 3.486 microhenry. It's a little better than I thought actually. So now I'm going to demonstrate disconnecting the secondary and removing it. So I'm going to disconnect the secondary from the ground and you'll see the inductance changes. As you can see it's gone down quite a bit. Don't know if you can read that, that now says about 3.364. Might have to turn your head sideways. I cannot always see how well I've got this camera focused, so now I'm going to take the secondary out and you'll see it go down even more. So now we're down to 3.323. So now what I'm going to do is work out what capacitor I need to make this primary 1. Point whatever it was megahertz. Yeah, I'll have to go through the video and see what the numbers were, but that's what I'm going to do right now. So, using this handy dandy little online calculator that I found, I plugged in the resonant frequency and the inductance, and the resonant capacitor that we need is 5.724 nanofarads. I will, of course, leave a little link to this, and with that, I know what capacitor I should use here. Except, of course, I'm not going to be using that 500 turn secondary because, well, the resonant frequency of that is just far too high. And that other secondary we tried just didn't work. I don't know what's wrong with it, but to be honest, that one's never worked properly. And although I do have a much better secondary somewhere, I just don't know where it is, so I'm going to be winding a new one in the next few coming days. Going to go for about 1500 turns. Then again, do all the necessary stuff that I need to work out what resonant capacitor I need. But anyway, I'm sure this video is getting long enough already. So, yep, I'm going to do that in the next video. And until next time, goodbye.